Hello everyone, it is April 5th, 2022. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this week's episode. So today I'm going to talk about memorizing, offer you three practice techniques for memorizing as I go about trying to memorize the, the first few sections of a lovely piece called Cherry Trees at Murchiston. This is a piece that I would like to record outside in the, with the cherry trees if the weather ends up permitting it, um, and I want to have it memorized. So when it comes to memorization, for some people mem memorizing pieces comes very easily, for some it comes very, it's a very difficult thing, but the three techniques I want to talk about today are the idea of practicing a piece in sections. Rather than going through the entire piece, you break it into sections when you go to practice. Then the idea of analyzing a piece maybe away from the harp or just looking at the music, looking for patterns and analyzing it can be a great way to help memorize a piece. And finally, the idea of when a piece is sort of in that state where it's about to be memorized or, or almost memorized or, or is basically memorized to quiz yourself and again, tying in with that idea of sections. So let's go over those, those three, those three things, things. So the first is the idea of practicing in sections. And this is where, this is just a general good practice technique. Once you've got a piece in, once you can play through a piece, and in this case, I mean this for me, I, 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 I haven't memorized it, but I have demonstrated it for students and I can, I can play it fairly well just kind of reading it. Then what can be really helpful is instead of playing the whole piece through a certain number of times, let's say you decide, okay, I want to work on this piece each day. I'm going to try to play through it four times. Well, rather than going from the beginning to the end four times, it is much better to break it into sections. Do each section, and what I would say is say, do each section three times, move on to the next one, three times, three times, three times. And then finally, at the end, or maybe later on in your practice session, for the fourth repetition, then play through the entire piece, trying to do it more as a performance rather than a practice session. And one of the effects of breaking it into sections is it helps for memorization because you get to kind of immediately go back and go over a certain thing rather than forgetting it by the time you get to the end of the piece and having to go back to the beginning. Um, it also gives you lots of great recovery spots because if you're always, you know, here's the start of this section and this section and this section, you hopefully know those really well, the pedal settings or the lever settings, the notes. So if something goes wrong during a performance, you have a spot to skip ahead to or to hang on to. So in this case, one I section might be these first four bars, this little intro that sounds like this. No, it's almost memorized, I, I missed that third, third little run. Um, that might be a section, and then maybe the next eight bars, I think it's eight bars, roughly eight bars, this next little bit to the double bar, that's another kind of section, a little bit longer, and then we get another section that ends here, and then a smaller four bar section with a repeat. And then on the next page, there's, there's two more eight bar or roughly eight bar sections. Now, of course, you might expand that. It could be that the little intro plus the first eight bars, so the first 12 bars become a section, but trying to have it small enough that you get that benefit of kind of immediately re repeating or rehearsing something that you're working on. So, for example, I could just play this. And I could do it again. And, and again, like a third time, say. And that in and of itself will start to sort of ingrain that pattern. But I want to speed up that process a little bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze this. And so to do that, I, I always tend to think in chords. It doesn't have to be, the music theory doesn't have to be chords. It doesn't have to be some formalized language. It also could be, I know uh, Carol Kappas has the uh, magic hand system where she's got names for all these different shapes. She has a teacup or the butterfly or whatever. And because of course we often get the same kind of shapes again and again, but if you have something to hang on to, some story to tell yourself, some narrative, something to, to, to really be, to, to formalize in your head rather than just trusting that the hands will continue, that can really help. So what I can see here is we're in the key of E flat. 
this little bit we start on the we start on a G but then we end up on an E D top D tom this little right and three times right we get this little section D dot tom D dot tom D dot tom we get that three times in a row and then what's this next little bit well it's still the G so we go tom 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 okay there's that F we're ending on an F on the top and we have this chord and this shape that 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 seems that seems that seems good. That, I think that's enough for me at the moment right now. And then in the left hand, one five eight shape, starting on E. We're in the key of E. Great. Then on C. So that we could think of that as being a third down. We go, and because the next one, the A, the one five eight ten twelve shape. So just coming up on an A chord, that is also a third down, right? Dom dom dom. Other way, I might think about it is that E E is also part of a C minor chord a C chord and also part of this A chord A flat major so those are the three chords that contain an E um, so that also can tie into it and so then also for myself knowing that okay it's so a 158 158 and this last time is a 158 uh, 10 12 which is the way I might Describe that. You know, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then the end, we're ending on this B flat, 158, but throwing in this extra crunch there, that extra note, a nice little second in there. And I just might think of that, oh yeah, there's a little crunch at the end or whatever. So let me try now that I've now that I've analyzed it, let's see if I can play this from memory. I'm going down a third. This ending, I've got a chord for the first time in the right hand and I end up with a chord for the first time in the left hand. Try it again. a little uncertain I knew that something was happening here but I didn't immediately I had to think oh yeah right this so it didn't happen quite as quickly as I would like to do this little try it one more time and that also ties in then with this idea of quizzing oneself so there I was, I analyzed this, I had this little section, and then I tried to test myself by doing some repetitions and seeing if I could do that from memory. And the idea of this testing is to not just rely on your hands. So what can happen, right, is that if we're really good at mu reading music, we read the music, And the notes just come from the page, through our eyes, bypass our sort of conscious narrative brain and go right into the fingers and it happen. And so if we take away the music, then there's maybe nothing left. We, we, we haven't, nothing has, has stayed with us from all that practice. If something's memorized and we're just relying on our, our hands, and then we suddenly go, wait, 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 wait that, that doesn't quite feel right, it doesn't sound right we don't necessarily have anything to fall back on in terms of this narrative that this 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 conscious picture of what is supposed to be going on and so as you as i'm testing myself i'm trying to not just rely on my hands but to have uh to anticipate with with with, with my mind what is happening next if that makes any sense at all so let's apply it to this next eight bar section and so i'm going to analyze it and I'm going to say, okay, this is starting the same as this. It's down an octave, right? And then I might kind of look at, for example, we have an E, and then the downbeat of this next bar is an F, and then a C, and then an F. And for the moment, I'm just going to stick with that, those four bars, just as I'm analyzing it and trying to memorize it, because I, I feel that's kind of long enough for the moment. And... I'm looking at the chord. So all of these are 158s. 
We start with the E, great, so it's kind of like the beginning, everything's just down an octave. And then here we get this B flat chord with this F, makes sense. We get this C with this A, right here. Mm -hmm. And then we end up again with an F and a B flat chord. So it, it's, we're, we start on this E, we head up to an F, down to a C, and end up on a B, right? So we go. Is that right? Oh, we end up on an F, sorry, the B chord, right? It's a B chord, but an F. That's, that can be useful in some pieces, maybe not in this case. I think that's kind of useful for me to kind of know that. And then the notes that lead us into those downbeats, this is this kind of a weird shape where we have this a couple, a couple seconds, right? I'm fingering that by placing 4, 3, 1, and then after I play 4 and 3, I'll just move 2 up to here, rather than trying to place that huge stretch. Now, I know I'm headed to here. How am I getting there? Ah. So this is like the beginning, but down to C this time, and then the end, how am I getting to this F? This is part of an, the same A chord. So I'm going to try a few reps of this then. So I know this is down an octave, this is down an octave. I get this weird shape coming up. The first of our B chords. Still part of an A chord. And G, F to end. So now I'll do a few reps. to that again just to give myself a little bit of a, a longer quiz as it were okay so again I felt a little bit of momentary panic of okay on the intro of, of remembering this and then I really was finding the fact that I knew E, B, A, B to be really quite helpful in that next section. Great. Let's analyze these next four bars. So again, E158. Oh, and for the first time now we have a chord, A chord. C minor 158 or C158. And this chord that jumps up, it's the next two notes of a C chord. So if we go thrum, thrum, thrum. This also is the next two notes of a C chord, same chord. G, and then again we end with a B, and it's the same one as here where we're adding in that extra A, that extra uh, second in there as well. So this, left hand, A, and then what is it? This is the C with these two chords. What comes next? I don't know, I have to look. G, first time we've had a G. Okay, so we get C and then G, cool. Again, we start with this E, dee -dum, dee -dum. we get this big run up, and we end up on a G, if we look at the downbeats, a B, and that B matches that G minor, and then finally we do end up on the F, same as, same as we have on all of these, and of each of these four bars, we ended up with an F plus a B chord. So, this little run, here's this shape where we're skipping one string, and in a sense it's an E chord, E root, but we're adding the F. And then I would think of this, 3, 2, 1, is, as being a C root position chord. What happens next? Oh.
we end up on that E, and then so D, da, dom, and then repeating those same notes, but with a different rhythm. One, two, three, four, with this shape skip. And this shape is the same as this shape, where we have a gap between three and four. And again, if, if, if you're just learning that, this might not be as helpful as just doing some repetition, just playing playing this. But at this point, I think I'm comfortable enough to try and see if I can do this. This is the right register and we have the A chord. Again, I've played this before, right? So there is some memory and I've looked, uh, I can visualize the music a little bit. I've talked through it with students. Um, but again, formalizing it for myself, giving myself some of these verbalizations of these patterns can be really, really helpful. So I want to quiz myself on this again. So this is one, two, three, off, right? Yeah. sounds on this. To not to make sure that it doesn't sound rushed. It's the first time we've had some 16th notes, in this case in the left hand. Let's try I want to try the whole thing now. Let's try to test the whole all of these um 12 bars. Again, I felt for me what was feeling most helpful because I kind of I have the tune in my ear. I, I, I know how it, I want it to sound. And so what I found most helpful there was knowing what chord the left hand was going to go to next. That was really helping me draw me along. I'm going to try it one more time. So that felt pretty good. That felt pretty good. So then 
I will want to do some repetitions of that, right? Again, testing myself in the sense that if something goes wrong, I won't try to find the right note. I will look at the music, see what the right note is, give myself a story or something to hang on to there. So when I get to it next time, I know exactly what that note is going to be. And so then I'll apply the same principle. The next eight bars are, are basically the same as this. With some extra chords, so I'll have to figure out some stories about that and why that's happening there. And then the next section, the next section, the next section, you know, three, sorry, three more sections. And by the end, then I should have a good grasp. I should be able to be at the point where I can play it by memory, maybe having to think quite hard about it. And then it's not going to take too long before then that starts to become pretty automatic. So again, I can kind of trust my hands, but I will have the backup then of the security of kind of knowing, oh yeah, this is what happens next. And this is what happens at this point. So I hope that gives you some ideas of ways you might apply this to a piece you're working on that you maybe want to memorize. Again, this is mainly applicable to a piece that's in pretty decent shape. You're not struggling to read through the notes um, and you wanting to make sort of push it from playing from the music to playing from memory. So I hope that was helpful and I will see you in two weeks time for another episode of Harp Tuesday. Cheers.